I thought I'd be able to do this just in one video. That would have been quite nice. Oh, there's loads of questions there. Maybe I can do it in one video. Oh, no, there we go. So some questions for practice, but I'm not sure if they were in the right place or not. But we'll make sure we do those practice ones. Right, so it says when the resultant force is in is zero, it's in equilibrium. So if I had one force going that way, F1, and one force going that way, F2, the resultant would go from there to there. Now, to stop it moving, because that's kind of being dragged, it looks as if like the, it's slightly being dragged to the right and being dragged up. So I'd need a force which was slightly dragging to the other way, other direction, to the left, and then down. So my resultant would go from the bottom of the first one to the top of the second one. But if I wanted it to be in equilibrium, I'd want that to be in the opposite direction. So that would put me in equilibrium there. So if I had a force, say like the total of that force was 1 to the right and 5 up, then the, the one to put it in equilibrium would be the opposite direction. So it would be minus 1, minus 5. And that would balance out that force that you've got, that resultant force. So this is like the resultant force. Resultant force. But to put it into equilibrium, I need a force going in the opposite direction. There. Right, now then, so it says from the previous example, a third force is added. So, all right, okay, cool enough. So we knew that. So this is just kind of going what I said the other the minute ago, isn't it? I knew the force was minus 110. So to balance it, to put it in equilibrium, the force I want, we, I don't know, I'll call it F. FE, for force in equilibrium. We call it what you want. Uh... That'll be 1 minus 10 there. But it wants it in terms of i and j. So it's 1i minus 10j there. So remember, x cross y up, it's the same, i and j, exactly the same. Right, so we've got, so it says calculate the acceleration of an object with a mass of 12 kilos and a force is acting right there. So my f equals ma. There, I can actually use four vectors. Right now, I need, I've got two forces on it, so I need a total force. So let's see, so putting them as column vectors, the total force, I'd have a 21 in the i and 16 in the j, and a minus 12 and a 20. So that's going to be equal to the mass, which is 12, times by the acceleration. Right, so if we just add up the left-hand side, that gives me 9 and uh, 36. I couldn't add that up then. It's very, very early. 12a. Now, I can make like, vectors from school. You can make them bigger. Remember them pictures you had with like the funny grids where you had to get from one point to another? If you went twice as far, it was just 2a. Right, so I need to divide it by 12. So if I divide 9 by 12... Um, I get three quarters, so 0 0.75. And if I divide 36 by 12, I get three. There. I'll put it, because it's like I and J in, I'll put it in terms of I and J. So it's 0 0.75 in the I direction and three in the J direction. So the I and J are just the kind of engineering way of doing X and Y. That's all. Okay. Right, I think that's it. Well done, everybody. I've got loads to practice on this. See you later. Bye-bye.